Please be seated. I want all those that are young at heart, especially the children, to come up here at this time. Come, children, come. Stop right there, Gabriel. Gabriel, don't go any further. Wait. Wait. And we're going this way. This way. This way. Okay, everybody come over here. This is a this is the Advent candles. Y'all know that? Y'all know what the Advent candles are all about? Notice that it's blue. Blue. You knew that, Logan? You're pretty sharp. I know that. Y'all see that I have on blue? Father Sam has on blue. We have blue up there. Blue up there. This morning when we lit this candle, right? It it was real weak. Real, real weak. I mean, in fact, the person that lit it said he came to light it again during the peace, and it still was weak. What had happened was we hadn't gotten any oil in this candle. It's an oil candle, and it's real weak. That happens to us sometimes, right? There's no energy, no energy, right? The kind of energy's gone. Teenagers will tell you about it. They never have any energy except when they're going full blast. Okay, you can come down and sit down over here. We're going we're gonna to sit down and talk about this. This is Advent. This is a season that we wait. And what are we waiting for? Do you know? Anybody know what we're waiting for? Christmas. Christmas. Way to go, William. You are so smart. And I'll tell you, you step up to the front of the line, buddy. That white candle is what represents Jesus' birth. And, uh, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things that we have to do before then. What do we think of when we think of Christmas, Logan? What do we think of? What do you think of when you think of Christmas? Uh, pastures. What? I'm a little bit of pain. Okay, sit down. What do you, who else has something to think of with Christmas time? Okay, come on up here. Come, come, Phil. What? Come here. Tell me your name. I ain't gotten to know your name yet. What's your name? Hannah. What? Cannon, what do you think of when you think of Christmas? What do you think of, Cannon? A kitty. A kitty, okay, all right, good. And your sister, what's her name? What's your sister's name? Huh? Armory. Armory. Okay, I'll learn it before long. It's good to have you up here. Go sit down. What do you, hey, what do y'all think of when you think, Lily, what do you think of when you think of Christmas? What? Christmas trees. What else? Oh, come on. William, what do you think of? What? Fun? Presents. Okay, finally, Gabriel, thank you. The presents. We think of presents, don't we? And it's usually for us, right? And we have a special gift we want. We want the best gift. And, and then when we don't get it, we get all disappointed, don't we? I didn't get my magic Blah, blah, blah. Okay, listen, listen. Christmas is not about getting. It's about giving, right? And we need to give. Uh, have y'all put any money in the Salvation Army bucket lately? Because that's an important thing to do, right? Because those people are helping people that are very poor. Huh? When you go by, put some money in it, okay? I'm going to give you a step. Because if you don't give, you know what happens? You just get kind of upset about everything. If I got upset about that candle this morning, I'd be like, ee, right? And if, come on, y'all, I've lost all of you. Come on over here. <laughs> come on. It's like this whole congregation. Y'all are, okay, here we go. Now listen, if, if, if you get upset about everything all the time, sooner or later you're just going to be like a crab, you know, burp, 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 all the time. And, and what will you turn into, Scarlett? If you act like that all the time, what will you turn into? Shout it out. What is that, Gabriel? What is it? Shout it. A dinosaur. A dinosaur. That's what you'll turn into. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody will ever want to see you again because you'll be in a museum somewhere and everybody will have to come pay money to see you. Get out of here now. Okay. <laughs> here we go. All right, Logan, when you get tired of that, come get the stamp I'm going to give you. Logan, come on over here, buddy. All right, thank you. I'll get to know your name sooner or later. Lexi, way to go, girl. 
Oh, you get two. That's good. All right, thank you. All right, Armin, I'll learn your name too before it's over with. Here you go. All right, Gabriel, thank you. Here's a dinosaur for you. No, you're getting this. We'll get you that next week. Go on. Go on with Miss Grace. <laughs> Father, make us the masters of ourselves that we might become the servants of others. Take our minds and think with them. Take our lips and speak through them. And take our hearts and set them on fire. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You know... Uh, I tell everybody that the nature of my job is interruptions, and nobody ever understands that. I don't really have a job, but, you know, it is. That's really the nature of what clergy do. And it's been one of those weeks. We've had lots of things happen. And, uh, you know, sometimes I wonder what happens to us. You know, we, we have... Uh, I got, got in here uh, Monday, we had an annual meeting Sunday night, and I understood that some people uh, thought it was too long, you know, and, uh, you know, probably some people thought that I didn't say enough, and then there were other people that didn't get what they wanted, they didn't get win their best blue ribbon or whatever, we didn't get blue ribbons, and, and so then that was the first thing, and then we had some other people that I found out were, you know, that we did some wonderful things this week and they were upset about certain things and at least they weren't upset with me. And I wrote down, I started writing down all these people that were upset and I thought, I got to keep a list, you know, because you never know. And then uh, I had a bunch of clergy that were upset with me and I, uh, or they were upset with everything. And, and so I wrote their names down as well and trying to sort through all this stuff, right? And then my son called me a week ago, two weeks ago. He said, Deb, we're coming Saturday morning, and uh, I'm, we're going to be with you a week. <laughs> and I told my daughter, I said, uh, your brother's coming to visit with us for a week. Oh, we're coming too, Dad. <laughs> Yay. So they all showed up this weekend, and then we had the annual meeting, and then we had some stuff going on here Saturday, and uh, giving a lot of turkey dinners out. And, and then... Uh, we're getting bulletins ready, end of the year, end of the month stuff. And if you look, the lessons are all wrong in the bulletins, right? They're all, every one of them are wrong. We do that from time to time to see if you're paying attention. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, all these things are happening. Then we had a death in the family, so we had a funeral to do. You know, that happens to us. We, we want everything to be perfect for Thanksgiving, right? We, at the family coming in and we're going to cook a turkey dinner or something you know really special and we we've, we've got the best recipe and then the oven breaks down you know or uh, you know you your hands get scalded and you can't cook anymore or something so then you have to have plan b but we really have plan b so so we uh we kind of deal with it as it comes to us and so i didn't get a lot of time this week to prepare my sermon Right, And so this morning I was in the office, I got up early this morning, five o'clock, and I was in there cooking a breakfast that I was suspect whether anybody would eat it or not, because I've been through this for a week now, you know, but I made them a breakfast casserole, best breakfast casserole they ever eat in their life, and there it was, and at 6.30 I finally went, I'm finished, got all the dishes washed, went and got dressed and came here to work, <laughs> and now I can sit down and rest and prepare a sermon so that all these people will be fed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then the door. And it was our altar guild director. And she says, I can't find the blue stole. Father Sam's blue stole. Can't find it. What are you going to do? And here I was. I just started working on my sermon. And I looked up and I went, I don't know. I don't know. And then Father Sam comes in. He needs some kind of last minute instructions on what I want him to do today. Here's the instructions, Sam. Have fun. You know, enjoy yourself. And I looked at him and I said, I'm still working on my sermon, Sam. <laughs> Can you give me a few minutes? Right. 
Well, that's life. You know, and then the funeral comes, and we have to do that. That's first. That comes first, right? And uh, we do it. That's how we deal with things. But sometimes that doesn't work right. We get upset because things don't come out the way we want them to. And I made a list of all that, thinking, what will we do? How do we deal with that, right? You all know we live in a cynical world for the most part, right? I mean, people are cynical about almost anything. I know I am. I mean, our phone rings like every four hours at our house, right? And my son said, that would drive me crazy. I said, we're old, son. We like people to call us. I mean, you know, even if they are telemarketers, right? <laughs> and then we have Black Friday, right? Everybody, y'all know what Black Friday is? I mean, isn't that interesting? Black Friday, you know, you'd think that has negative connotations, right? Black Friday. But it means that all the ink will be black after if everybody goes out and buys something, right? And you don't have to raise your hands, but if you want to, raise your hand if y'all went out shopping on Black Friday. No, you don't have to. Don't do it. We didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I, I'm sorry. I failed. But, but my daughter told me that, Dad, Black Friday doesn't mean anything anymore. They have pre-Black Friday, right? You have pre-Black Friday sales. Then you have Black Friday sales. Then you have post-Black. I said, what about Cyber Monday? She said, Dad, it doesn't mean anything anymore. It's, it's Black Friday. Monday, Black Tuesday, you know, and, and you know, people get upset, and, and then things happen that are out of kilter with the way we would normally behave in our life, right? Y'all seen the commercial with the guy that comes with the packages, he's got a black eye, and the guy looks at him, his neighbor, and he says, so, what happened to you? He says, Oh, Black Friday. He said, but I saved hundreds of dollars. He looks over at him and he said, what about you? He said, oh, it was easy. And he looks over and points at his new Buick. He says, I saved thousands of dollars. So, so, you know, the implication is go buy you a Buick. You'll be a lot happier. And you won't have a black eye. I'll probably get in trouble for making an advertisement for Buick now. But that's where... Uh, we live our lives often. And then in the middle of this, we're all wondering what we're going to do about Aunt Sue and getting the perfect gift. Or those gift trees that we have outside that sometimes and oftentimes people will take an angel off of and then they'll fail to put their name next to it. And all of a sudden we think, well, what about those poor children? Are we going to get them a present? You know, And it eats at us and we think, oh, and then we want to be honored. We want a special gift, right? And, and then the gift doesn't appear. And we go, oh, I sure was hoping to get that, you know. And uh, then we're sad. And then we read Mark's gospel for the first Sunday of Advent. And what do we hear? We hear this, all these dark things are going to come. There will come a time and the... the Things will start to appear and, and you'll be hearing wars and rumors of war and there'll be a desolating sacrilege and oh, you better be ready, right? And prepare, be awake. Be awake, I say, be awake. And Advent is the season for waiting and being awake and being ready for that gift, the special gift, the really special gift that's going to come. And we read on the first Sunday of of Advent, this what is called the little apocalypse in Mark's gospel, the Mark, the gospel, the messianic secret where people just can't get it, you know, and we know that sin is a major feature of this, right? And apocalypse means uncovering, right? And we do this in prison. In prison, one of the first talks we tell them is about discovery, right? And we want them to discover Christ in their midst. It's hard to sometimes, isn't it, when everything's going on and Black Friday becomes Black Thursday and Monday and Tuesday and all those things. And yet, we believe Jesus is in our midst. In the midst of all this craziness at my house and uh, my wife looked at me last night and she says, our house is a wreck. 
And I said, well, they're leaving tomorrow. Thanks be to God. <laughs> and I said to them, I say to the kids, I said, kids, who wants to go out with Grandpa to put money in the Salvation Army bell ringer's bucket? Come on, go with me to put money in the bucket. No! Right? They were too busy having fun, enjoying themselves. And yet, if they had done what Grandpa asked them to do, they would have discovered the Christ in their midst. Because that's what this is all about, this Advent season. It's really about giving, not getting. It's about us learning how to give. Because if we give, we learn to live as Christ lived, who gave everything. That's the, real, that's the gift, you know. But, you know, sometimes we get caught up in our own stuff and we have our own ideas about the way things have to be. And I remember a story where a friend of mine's stepson reported in to one of his friends. He met her up at a bar and he was talking about his stepfather and not very nice. And he said, you know, the one thing that bugs me the most about them is they drink. Now think about it. Where did he meet her? In a bar. But we forget that, right? We want to point our fingers at each other. And we did have some upheaval this week. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. We had some great things as well. But I want you to remember something this Advent season. I want you to kind of repeat this after me. He says, this Advent season, no matter what, I have to encounter, I'm going to be nice to people. Wouldn't that be great? If we all were really nice to each other all the time, you wouldn't have to hear this sermon right now. You'd never have to hear a sermon again because you would be with God all the time. Hope. That's what Advent is about. The first Sunday Advent is about hope. A lot of times we lose our hope when we get in the midst of darkness. There's a lot of people dealing with a lot of darkness this holiday season. But you have hope. That's what Jesus says. That's what Jesus brings us is hope. One of my favorite movies is The Shawshank Redemption. And Andy Dufresne is talking to his friend Red. And he says, uh, Andy, uh, Red... Hope is a good thing. He said, in fact, I think it's the best of things. And no good thing ever dies. Jesus Christ lives and wants to give us the gift. And the way to enter into it is by us giving of ourselves and being nice to one another. And if we do, the world will be a better place and we will find the kingdom on earth. Those with ears to hear, let them hear.